Approaching absolute health requires enlisting the body's own systems to function at their fullest capacity. The nervous system is perhaps the most important system because it literally controls all the others. Stimulation of the nervous system is critical to life. The anatomical closeness of the spinal elements is proof that regular mild stimulation through proper movement is intended by the body's design. Thus, as it relates to the spine and the adjacent nerves, movement is life and lack of movement is death. There are many ways in which the neurologic elements can be gently stimulated to function. Simple walking causes counter-rotation of the spinal segments at every level. This is a generally good way to make sure the nerves function. In addition to keeping the joints healthy and movable, it provides mild stimulation of the nervous system. One hour of walking each day may help not only reduce lower back pain, but also be the source of considerable neurologic stimulation. Starting each day with a stretching routine is another way to create gentle neurologic stimulation. Exercise routines that involve the back, neck, and spine when performed properly will also provide good stimulation of the nervous system. Certain types of yoga will help provide the stimulation one needs for a variety of general health functions. Deep tissue massage when moving the segments of the spine can sometimes create some stimulation to the nervous system. The best form of stimulation of the nervous system, however, is specific spinal manipulation. It provides for normalized nerve function, increased blood flow, and improved range of motion, all of which help the immune response. There are many obvious results to improving the function of the nervous system, but let me tell you about just a few. The principles of chiropractic manipulation of the spine were discovered back in the late 1800s when Dr. D.D. D. Palmer attended to the complaint of the janitor of the building who related his story of lost hearing when something in his back snapped years before. Now that we have been able to do research, we have found that specific spinal manipulation improves the range of motion of the joints by freeing adhesions in the joint capsule, stretching the muscles that support the joints, allowing for increased fluid mobility within the joint space, and relaxation of the surrounding tissue. There is a specific ability of nerve tissue to conduct impulses when stimulated. The closeness of the neurological bed creates impulse generation when nerve tissue close to the spinal joints is stimulated as a result of the manipulation of that joint. We have seen increased blood flow to an area adjacent to the joint being manipulated and the area to which the nerves of that spinal level are related as well. Dilation of the surrounding vessels occurs when spinal joints are manipulated. This procedure has been well researched a great deal in modern times. It is one of the safest medical procedures performed nowadays. Risks for this procedure are very low. The fact is, as it relates to stroke, one event in 60 million manipulations has been documented. That means that you have more of a chance of having a stroke from taking an aspirin than having a manipulation. It is important to know when manipulation is indicated for a joint and a condition and when it is not. Only specifically trained doctors of chiropractic and some osteopaths have this knowledge and remain current on it. Position of the patient on modern equipment and minimizing the need for extreme force will increase the ease of the procedure and allow the patient to tolerate it much better. The doctor makes specific contacts with parts of the spine and takes great care in removing any variables with the procedure. The proper angle of thrust, amount of thrust, and speed of the thrust are skills held by only those well trained in this procedure. 
that takes years to perfect these skills. They should only be administered by those trained in the specialty. Well-meaning physical therapists, trainers, or medical doctors should not attempt these procedures without first certifying their skills accordingly.